bills have been introduced into the Ontario legislature seeking to increase the legal consequences for certain offences under the Highway Traffic Act. And joining us now is McLeish Orlando's Alison Burson, who is going to help us better understand all this. Welcome to our new home. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Well, let's start with Bill 158, the Vulnerable Road Users Act. Just the name of it alone is confusing. Explain it. It is. It's actually a bill that was brought in by the NDP uh, in September of 2017. And that bill really looks at vulnerable users of the road broadly to say, how can we not only protect them, but let's look at the legal consequences to people that either seriously injure them or kill them, and how can we better protect them? So what is a vulnerable user, a pedestrian, I would yes. say? So um, they broadened it to say, let's let's call vulnerable users of the road pedestrians, um, cyclists, those are probably the most common ones, um, construction workers, so people that work out every day on the mm. streets or near the streets. Um, they're also looking at emergency response workers, so people that attend on the scene, whether it be police officers, fire, um, paramedics that run to aid people, they're in the course of their duty, and then they're seriously injured or killed. That is really the large umbrella of what they consider a vulnerable road user in this legislation. So let me ask you right now, are the consequences, the legal consequences, not adequate? Not at all. Um, Give us an example. So an example is under the Highway Traffic Act, um, the kind of the most um, egregious um, offense of seriously injuring or killing someone will usually bring about a first charge of careless driving. And then what happens under the act is um, the driver will usually get legal representation. They'll be able to plead down to a lesser offense. So um, failure to share the road or making an improper left turn. And really that, despite the fact that someone might have been seriously injured or killed, that just brings about a consequence of a fine of $500. Wow. You can kill somebody and, and end up with a fine of $500? Yes, and there's multiple examples of that. And and it's really this petite piece of legislation was also aimed at trying to bring some closure to um, the victim's families who didn't understand that. And they come to what they think is going to be a sentencing hearing. Um, they have victim impact statements. And they're about to read how, you know, the loss of their husband or father has impacted them. And the lawyer will stand up and the uh, convicted driver isn't even doesn't need even to be there. And they'll say he's pleading guilty to failure to... Um, turn properly and he you know then the judge will say well that brings about a fine of five hundred dollars that's it and then the next matter goes on and the victim's families are all standing in the courtroom going is that it Mm. and so these two pieces of legislation i'll talk about the second one after really said we have to do something but what is it what we're going to do the changes that will happen now there'll there'll be minimum probation for people? So under, there is two pieces of competing legislation and okay. um, there is still debates going on about which one potentially will receive royal assent. Um, is it going to be a combination of both? So if we stick with the Vulnerable Road Users Act that we were talking about mm-hmm. that the NDP introduced, what they want to look at in terms of the mandatory legal consequences for people convicted under the Highway Traffic Act, it could be of various offenses, but ultimately if that conviction um results in also the serious injury or death of person of a person, you have a mandatory probation period and it can be up to one year. You also have um, mandatory community service that you have to do and there's varying hours for that. Your probation period also during that period, it prevents you from being able to drive a motor vehicle. You're required under this piece of legislation when you have a conviction like that to undergo new driver instruction and training. And I think most importantly, for the victims um, of the victim's family is that the convicted driver is required to attend at the sentencing so that he, he or she can hear the victim impact statements of the family. So it's really five points to this particular piece of legislation that would be mandatory if someone is convicted of uh, an offense in the Highway Traffic Act that leads to injury or death. Well, it certainly sounds like a step in the right direction. Yes. It does. Now, there's... The other yes. side of that. So there has um, there has been a second piece of legislation that's been introduced, and um, it's really in a combination of a number of acts. But I call it the Road Safety Act. 
Um, and that was introduced in November. And that's really looking at let's increase fines. And let's increase fines in a particular area where we're receiving an, receive, seeing an increase in offenses. And hopefully that will deter drivers. And really what we're looking at in this piece of legislation is distracted driving. Mm -hmm. And the most common thing that we hear of is people On still the with their devices mm -hmm. um, and then also people failing to yield to pedestrians and time and time again we're seeing that pedestrians in the crosswalk with the right of way just vehicles hitting them and most recently just one was sent to me where the vehicle doesn't even stop so really this piece of legislation is saying can we reduce the number of these victims that are injured or killed by increasing the fines for people that have handheld devices and if they're convicted first time of uh, distracted driving the fine is increased to five hundred dollars right rather than uh, three hundred um, the second offense is Two thousand dollars, and the third offense would be three thousand dollars. And what about the failing to yield to a pedestrian, uh, uh, specifically with this one? Because now we've seen, oh, I guess the rule was was there, but you know, you cannot enter the crosswalk if the countdown ha yes. has started. Which I still see people running across when it's at nine. It's because they can make it across the side, you know, from one side to the other. But if you fail to yield to that pedestrian, the fine is going to go up to from what from to a thousand dollars for the first offense as well. Um, well, that's actually less. So, fail to year to pedestrians, it, it varies. It can go from three to five hundred dollars to up to a thousand dollars. So okay. that that doesn't seem to say, um, be a set as high as distracted drivers. Um, what's interesting, though, and there is still debate, so it hasn't received royal assent, is they're looking in this bill um, at mandatory license suspensions. And, for distracted drivers. Yes. And okay. they're even asking, um, the police officers are asking for the ability to seize the vehicle at the moment of the um, ticket. And license suspensions for the first offense would be three days, second offense, seven days, 30 days. Third offense, um, uh, third offense, thirty days with demerit points demerit being up point. to six, six points. Wow! So ro drivers, road users should really be aware. There is going to be a bill with much stiffer consequences. It could be a combination of both of these bills, but in terms of the advocates behind them, they really feel that there needs to be something done, um, and it could be as early as the new year where some sort of a bill receives royal assent. Ontario's driving legislation currently has no offense for careless driving causing death? It does not. So it's only careless driving, it, it, in, unless you're dealing with potentially um, alcohol. So then um, the Highway Traffic Act really is almost like a hybrid act. So there's the criminal code. So if someone's drinking and driving, that's where you'll see some offenses and convictions under the criminal code. The Highway Traffic Act really is almost more quasi-fine related. So what the, the second bill has introduced, which is an interesting point, is they said we need something that has stiffer consequences similar to potentially um, criminal consequences. So what they've introduced is careless driving causing um, bodily injury or death that would carry a fine up to a maximum of 50000 um, It also would lead to potentially a license suspension, depending on the circumstances, of up to five years and potentially imprisonment for up to two years. So that really has... Um, it's really kind of brought about an awareness um, that this is now not something that can just be pled down for $500. It has some serious consequences to the distracted driver. So if uh, they are con convicted of careless driving causing death and alcohol is not involved, would that be because of distracted driving or cannabis or what? Well, not cannabis. Cannabis is going to be something different. But there's recently um, uh, a story in the paper of an individual who right now has been charged with careless driving because he was reaching down to reach get a water mm -hmm. bottle and looked up and struck a pedestrian so it can on be the anything, curb. Yeah. Um, but um, so distracted driving really could be anything. And there's this whole um, debate and plea within the courts where they're saying, well, wait a minute, this is unprecedented. You know, it's not like he was drinking and driving. It's not like he did have cannabis. So it should just be more of the fine. And this piece of legislation says, no, we have to enter into another era where there are legal consequences for more than just So bottom line, abuse. keep your eyes on the road and don't do anything mm -hmm. else that takes your eyes off the road. Absolutely. And okay. most importantly, is the devices they Absolutely. are really really clamping down on those and there are going to be immediate consequences now allison has written a blog it's up on whatshesaidtalk.com right now that goes into further detail
detail and you can get uh, all the information and find out how to contact Alison Burson from McLeish Orlando should you need her services. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This is what she said. We'll be right back. What she said. She's magical, mystical, or a power. 